there are different ways of structuring your discussion chapter and your phd thesis and this usually depends on how you have structured your thesis overall so some people might have different chapters of their thesis with their different findings so they have the method of each study that's if you had different studies in your phd so you have the methods you have the findings and then you have a discussion and at the end you do an overall discussion of all the different findings in your phd or you might have your study chapters as methods their findings and then you don't do any discussion there you do the discussion at the end so regardless of however you structure your phd thesis overall how you structure the different studies Studies. there are different ways to structure the discussion chapter my own method for structuring the discussion chapter was to first of all start with an introduction to the chapter and then do a summary of the main findings in the phd so what you want to do ideally is to have different paragraphs with the different findings of your phd where you highlight and just remind the reader remind the examiner remind your supervisors about all that they have read in the previous chapter so that discussion initial part of the discussion is to summarize all the findings of your phd different paragraphs i like them so it's clear to the reader then after you have done that you take each finding and make them a separate subsection such that you, you take each finding and then compare to existing literature so you compare and contrast the finding from your phd to what other researchers have done so how does your work compare to their work how does it differ from their work what does your work add to the work that people have done you know how does it build up on the work that people have done how does it address gaps identified by other researchers and so this also builds up on your literature review you would have done a, a literature review at the beginning of the PhD hopefully and you'll be doing you know a literature search as you go along just updating yourself with the literature so that section where you're comparing your findings to existing literature is almost like you're doing an up-to-date search and finding out what people have done since you even started your PhD and comparing and contrasting your work so it's almost like a critical analysis very critical analysis of your work compared to what other people have done so you'll be comparing your work to what other researchers have done on the particular topic that you studied and also the wider field so after you do that in different subsections taking each finding and comparing and contrasting to literature you could now end with an overall summary of the chapter so now some people might decide to have another conclusion section in this discussion chapter or you might have the conclusions as a separate chapter for me i had my conclusions as a separate chapter so in the conclusion section what you want to do after you've done all that discussion and critical analysis comparison and contrasting to different work that people have done at the beginning of the conclusion section you want to have a statement or basically a section that highlights the original contribution of your phd thesis to knowledge so what is original about your phd because that's the whole point of a phd an original contribution to knowledge so i like that in maybe one or two paragraphs at the beginning of the conclusion section and then after that you want to highlight what are the implications of your findings for practice for policy for education and so on dependent on your topic area and after that you want to highlight the strengths and limitations of your PhD thesis there will be strengths there will be limitations so methodological strengths methodological limitations are just overall reflecting on the process and if you did a qualitative study you can have a reflexivity section where you reflect on the overall research process and your position as the researcher compared to your stakeholders some people might decide to structure their reflexivity section differently and have it in other chapters but you can ideally have it in that conclusions chapter or section or in the discussion section and after that you can have a section that highlights recommendations for further research based on the limitations that you've identified in your study you could also have a section that highlights your dissemination plan for your phd thesis so there are different ways to structure the discussion section and then the conclusion section of your phd thesis i hope you found these tips helpful and i'll see you in the next video bye